Chapter 21 Buddy's smile faded. He narrowed his blue eyes. He raised a hand and pointed a finger at me. I like the way you choke up, he said. But maybe we could find you a lighter bat. Huh? My mouth hung open. I couldn't move. I stood there gaping at him. Buddy? He picked up the bat from the ground. Does it feel comfortable? Let me see swing again, Wendy. He handed the bat to me. My hands trembled as I took it from him. I kept my eyes on him, waited for him to cry out, to grab his chest and collapse in a heap on the ground. So many aluminum bats are lighter, he said. He brushed back his blonde hair with one hand. Go ahead, swing again. I took a few shaky steps away from him. I wanted to make sure I didn't hit him again. Then I choked up on the bat and swung. How is it? he asked. F fine, I stammered. He flashed me a thumbs up and went to talk to Ronnie. Whoa, I thought. What is the story here? I swung that bat right into his chest, hard enough to break a few ribs, or at least knock his breath out, but Buddy didn't even seem to notice. What is the story here? I told Jan and Ivy about it at dinner. Jan snickered. <laughs> I guess your swing isn't as hard as you think. But it made a horrible sound, like eggs breaking or something, I explained. And he just went on smiling and talking. He probably waited until he was out of sight. Then he screamed his head off, Ivy suggested. I forced myself to laugh along with my two friends, but I didn't feel like laughing. It was all too strange. I mean, no one could take a blow like that right in the chest and not even say ouch. Our team lost by 10 points, but after that, fuck! Who can think about the game? I glanced across the room to the council table. Buddy sat at one end, talking laughing with Holly. He seemed perfectly okay. I kept glancing at him all through dinner. Again and again, I heard the sickening fuck the bat made as it smashed into his chest. I just couldn't get out of my mind. I kept thinking about it as we trooped out to the track after dinner for the winter's walk. It was a windy night. The torches flickered and nearly went out. The trees around the track shivered and bent. Their branches seemed to reach down for the ground. The marching music started and the winters paraded by. Rose waved to me as she passed. I saw Jeff walking proudly near the back of the line, his gold coins jangling around his neck. After the ceremony, I hurried back to the room and climbed into bed. Too many troubling thoughts whirred around in my brain. I wanted to go to sleep and shut them out. The next morning at breakfast, Rose and Jeff were gone.